one frustration you've probably experienced uh, when getting started with uh, complex numbers or complex analysis uh, more specifically is that a lot of functions you know from like real analysis um, you can still define them but they are sort of uh, multi-valued and this is what we are going to look at now and what do i mean by multi-valued well in general there's sort of some point uh, at which you absolutely can't define the function and at other points you can always locally define it on like a patch uh, but you have trouble defining it everywhere so one example we can consider is the function uh, that is mapped to the alpha th power where alpha is not a natural number then you can sort of always locally define that function but you run into problems when you're trying to define it everywhere and the reason is that if you sort of try to go once around the singularity which is at zero you run into the problem that well for example you start at the point one and you go around once and uh, sort of always uh, trying to keep this function continuous and then you don't end, uh, uh, end up at one, but at a different point. This is generally the thing that prevents you from defining these functions everywhere. A uh, similar problem uh, you, of course, also get, for example, with... Uh, the logarithm of that, whatever that is supposed to be, you start off, uh, for example, at uh, at one. You say log one is zero, sure, and then you sort of go a bit. You're at i log one is zero, and then you go to i. Then you have log i. Yeah, I mean the absolute value is one. So the real part is still zero, but the imaginary part is the argument, uh, which is pi over two. So pi over two times i. And then you go further, you end up at minus one. Log minus one is, well, similar argument, pi i. Then you go further, at minus i. Log minus i is 3 pi over 2 times i and then you complete the circle and you get log 1 is 2 pi i which uh, hmm yeah okay that's a problem so the way you usually get around this is by sort of r arbitrarily restricting your domain uh, by introducing a branch cut so you're saying, okay, I'm choosing not to define my function, say, along this ray that goes to infinity. Um, and then when you sort of cut out this ray, you just get a simply connected domain. And on this domain, you can define your logarithm just by integrating one over z. And like Cauchy's integral theorem tells you that you can define it in a, in a nice way. So, a general observation. Um, how how we do we end up with these functions? Like, we've looked at weird powers, we've looked at logarithms, and it turns out that sort of if you only allow one point as your singularity, um, you th those are pretty much your only choices. Mm. How, how do we get these functions? Like, how do we end up with them um, without necessarily appealing to real numbers? And um, for that, we can look at differential equations because at least the way I was taught analysis is uh, that like integrals were sold to me as tools to solve differential equations. So let's have a look. Which differential equation is solved by z to the alpha? Um, and for that, well, let's call 
that function f. Uh, what is f's derivative is alpha times z to the alpha minus 1, which happens to be alpha times f of z divided by z. Um, so if we rearrange that thing, uh, we get something like z times f's derivative minus alpha times f is 0. Or if you want to write this in a more operator way, you can say that f is annihilated by this differential operator. And similarly, if we look at the logarithm, so g of z is supposed to be the logarithm of z, whatever the logarithm of that z is supposed to mean, well, for like some specified domain, then the derivative of z is 1 over z. Uh, of g is 1 over z. Um, so what does that tell us? Um, well, we can again multiply by z, and then we get 1. Um, yeah, now this is a inhomogeneous, and uh, we, we'd really like to, to have things be homogeneous. One thing to do um, is that, well, we can, we can go further. We can take another derivative, and, I don't know, multiply by z again. So if we take another derivative, we get something like this. A zero, and well, multiply by z, sure. Okay, so this is like z d squared applied to g is zero. And of course, now this is a second order differential equation, uh, so we are supposed to get two solutions. Uh, one solution is the logarithm, and the other, other solution, well, is just a constant function. Okay, I mean, constant functions aren't really. Uh, a problem here. Yeah, you, you might notice that, oh wait, this and, and this actually look very similar. So generally we get these as solutions to differential equations. I mean, big deal, most analytic functions are, are in some way solutions to differential equations. But what kind of ODEs? Um, so if we look at that derivative minus alpha uh, f of z is zero. Then you can sort of um, divide through by the leading coefficient because, I mean, in the end we want this to be sort of explicit. Then we see that while this is a linear differential equation, one of its coefficients uh, actually has a singularity. And if we now look at our other differential equation, um, well, z d, z d, g of z, well, what is that? Well, that's z squared, d squared, g of z, plus z d, g of z. And if we divide through by the leading coefficient, so this is zero and zero is the same as the second derivative plus one over z times the first derivative plus nothing times the last derivative. So you can see again here we have a singularity. Um, here we don't, but there, there could also be a singularity here. Um, for example, if we looked at not z d squared, but z d minus alpha squared, uh, we get blah 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 and like alpha squared g of z. And when we divide through by z squared, which we still get, we get like second derivative, blah, 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 and then alpha squared divided by z squared g of z. So what we observe, or what we might 
formulate into a conjecture uh, multi-valued functions appear as solutions to ODEs of the form nth derivative plus some coefficient function uh, n minus first derivative plus some other coefficient function n minus second derivative and so on until the nth coefficient function with no derivative where the first coefficient function a1 can have simple poles, the second one can have double poles and so on and the last one may have n-fold poles so where the i-th coefficient function can have poles of order i.